What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Dark David and if you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So QYLG is a new uh, covered call ETF that Global X made and I find it really interesting. And this is one, I actually like it better than QYLD and I'll explain you guys why. So I'll go over a dividend analysis, I'll go over the trends, we'll go over the portfolio of both of these. And this is one that I cannot wait till M1 Finance gets on their portfolio. And I will be constantly emailing them to try to get QYLG on there because it's such a special covered call ETF. And in the long run, QYLD, I, I'm just gonna explain you guys why, why I like QYLG over QYLD and long term wise that there's just so more pros than cons. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. Smash that like button and let's check this out right now. QYLG, it's a Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call and growth ETF. So you're seeing covered call options and growth. So they're sitting at 29.58. They're kind of a new kid on the block, and a lot of people are a little iffy on them. But I'm gonna show you why I like it better. Its previous close was 29.96. Day range was 29.58 to 29.96. Its year range was 26.35 to 34.20, and its volume was 344k. So we're gonna jump to to QYLD. So already QYLD, it's sitting at 2101 its year range is 1893 to 2315 you're not seeing an increase in price day range is 21 uh, dollars basically its previous close was 2108 so let's look inside these guys let's see what they're about on the global x website i just want to say this this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes only disclaimer in the description so qyld this is the nasdaq 100 covered call etf so Morningstar gives it a four stars. So their goal is for high income. So QYLD seeks to generate income through covered call writing, which historically produces higher years, yields in, vol in periods of vol volatility. I mean, I'm literally drinking a Bang energy drink while I'm doing this. So I'm like amped up a little bit. So monthly distributions. QYLD has made monthly distributions for eight years running. QYLD writes call options for the nasdaq 100 index saving investors a time and potential expense of doing so individually so the pros are what i like about qyld and i'm going to be long in qyld is i don't have time for options you know i'm not an expert in options it takes a long time to really be good with options you can't just do it overnight it takes a lot of strategy i'm in nurse practitioner school i don't have time for that so the expense ratio is 0 0.60 percent inception date was 12 11 13 so the one thing is the net expense ratio is uh, our total expense ratio 0 0.60 percent but the distribution is nice so if you like income it's look i mean look at it 12.11 percent so here's its performance history i mean it's not going to really jump i mean just be honest with you here's our top holdings apple microsoft amazon tesla nvidia alphabet um class uh, a and c uh facebook meta platforms broadcom costco pepsi cisco adobe comcast intel actually some pretty good uh dividend growth stocks too nvidia is a good one microsoft apple you're seeing what they're doing in Pepsi. So you're seeing what they're doing. They're writing call options. I don't got time for that. So I like these guys as income. I absolutely love it. And we'll go over the dividend trends with these guys uh, shortly. So let's go to QYLG. So here's the NASDAQ 100 covered call and growth ETF. The so QYLG seeks to generate income by writing covered calls in the underlying index. By writing calls on 50% of the portfolio, the strategy allows investors to capture half of the upside potential of the underlying index. QYLG expects to make distributions on a monthly basis. So here's their expense ratio, 0.60%, 104 holdings. And here's their price. So the year, the net asset value, and since inception, here's their top holdings, just like what they have. 
But here's the thing. If you go back 50% by writing calls on 50% of the portfolio, I'm going to read this again. Strategy allows investors to capture half of the upside potential of the underlying index. So you're seeing growth, potential growth. And I'm going to show you the dividend trends on both of these. And actually, I, I mean, I'm going to probably own both of these in a portfolio. Um, but this is why I like QILG better. And looking at the trends and, and doing a dividend analysis, this is what I like about QYLG. Check this out. So just looking at the trends of QYLD, and I, and I have done numerous videos. I absolutely love QYLD. I'm going to be long in QYLD. I mean, I'm buying QYLD just about every week for my M1 finance dividend portfolio because it's a. I have a strategy to you know, earn a thousand to three thousand dollars a month in my monthly dividends, two thousand to four thousand dollars a month in my quarterly dividends. But I'm telling you, the taxes, I'm gonna be hit a little bit with taxes on these guys. So you're at worst, I mean I see what, twelve cents, fourteen cents, nine cents. I mean, it's not gonna be like that. At worst, you probably based on this I see seventeen, let's just say since twenty nineteen, you get seventeen cents. Well we got sixteen. Let's just say 17 cents to, at best, I know this is a crazy one that happened in, um, right at the end of the year, but you're going to get about 17 cents to 21, 22 cents. That's kind of the trend that they have. And NASDAQ right here lists them in 11.94. So it's not going to jump up in price per share. Um, the, the other one, which I'll go over, I'm going to tell you some strategies that I have in mind with uh, QYLG and um, why I kind of like it better than QYLD. So we'll go over that. So these guys are 29.58. The dividend yield's 5.87. So the yield's a little bit less than the other one. But studying these trends, okay, you're starting to see a little bit of an increase from 13 cents. All right, it hit 13 cents in September. But I don't think it's going to do that. Again, I'm not giving financial advice for entertainment purposes, only disclaimer in the description. But hopefully, based on the model of this, these dividends increase over time. Now, they're going to be probably a little bit more expensive than QYLD. One thing that I'm looking with QYLG is to have it, when I set up my Roth IRA with M1 Finance, I'm going to probably have QYLG in it because one, when you have a traditional Roth IRA, you throw that in there, um, you know, you're kind of protected. It, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the taxes, you know, and, and income, a passive income from the covered call, um, it kind of helps you and protects you with those taxes when you have a traditional Roth IRA. Now, obviously, traditionally, you take money out in the long run. You still have to pay, say, like if I um, make 100000 a year, I have to say that I make a hundred thousand a year with a Roth IRA, and eventually, when I take taxes out, you know, I don't have to pay. Or I'm sorry, when I take um, money out, I don't get taxed on it. So, the, so that's the benefit of the Roth IRA. There, the that's the benefit of QYLG. Hopefully, again, this is a new kid on the block, but my philosophy is again net asset value. This price per share is probably going to go up, and hopefully, the dividend will go up. So that's the thing about these guys with the dividend trends. Now, it looks down now, but the long run, hopefully it's going to be a lot higher. And again, the expense ratio, 0.60%, but I don't got time to do options. I can lose a lot of money. I mean, I'm throwing money into school. I got, you know, um, paying off certain loans, which I'll probably pay off a lot faster once I'm... Um, you know, after the summer semester, but there's just looking at this and strategizing with this, you can really implement a lot of dividend investing strategies. And I always like dividend hikes. Just did a video on EPR properties, why I like them. They're starting to hike their dividend. Realty income hikes their give dividend. These guys hopefully will hike their dividend. So in the long run, this one's better. I like this one. I'm probably going to um, make changes to my M1 Finance portfolio and implement this one 
So that I start getting raises. I want dividend hikes. I mean, that's the goal of a dividend growth portfolio. I have QYLD to buy stocks like these that increase their dividends and they buy QYLD. So then, you know, that my portfolio will be very dominant in distributing monthly dividends and these guys can start paying for quarterly dividends. So imagine you have 100 shares of these guys and they start distributing 17, 18, 19 cents. Hopefully, you know, don't quote me on that, but it may not happen, but it's a strategy that they have with their covered call options and their covered call growth ETF. So you kind of know, I, I hope you guys understand what, what I'm saying, what I like about this with the, the price per share increase and the dividend hopefully will not be stagnant between 17 cents and 22 cents like QYLD. So let me know what you think of this video. If you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. This is Dark Dividend. You guys have a good one and I'll post a video tomorrow. Take care.